Hello. So in this video, we are going to do sort of a quick run through of how to solve and represent the solution to a couple sort of classic inequality situations. Okay. So first up, let's say we want to find all real number x, right? So this, as a quick reminder, this is all x in the set of real numbers such that this thing is true. So when you when you're sort of solving an inequality, what you're really looking for is to find all of the values of the variable, in this case x, that make this inequality true when you plug it in and check, okay? So to solve this, what we're really gonna do is just take this thing and treat it like it's an equality, right? So we're gonna sort of isolate x. So we can do that by putting together the stuff on the left, right? So these. Uh, parentheses aren't really doing anything, so I can just sort of lift those, put the plus one and the minus two together to get that minus one. Then I go to add one to both sides and subtract two x from both sides, and that gets me that x is less than one. Now, this is a way of writing the solution, but to be clear, right, this is a whole bunch of different numbers. In fact, any number that is strictly less than one is an answer, right? So zero works, negative e works, uh, 22 over 37 works, like all kinds of stuff, right? Another way we could represent this though is by putting it on a number line, right? Like doing an actual, what we would say is a graph of the solution set. So here we wanna graph this x less than one, but we wanna note, right, that this is a strictly less than, right? It's not less than or equal to. So since it's strict, I'm gonna start with that open circle and then it's less, so, right, x less than one, so it's going to go to the left, right? Because, again, when we say less than, we really mean to the left of, and it's open-ended. It's anything less than one, so we have that little arrow on the end, right? And last but not least, right, we have the, we have the inequality form, we have this sort of solution set uh, graph, this number line form. We could also do this as that interval form, right? Everything to the left of one, not including one, so I'm gonna use a parenthesis, and I can go all the way to negative infinity, meaning that anything in the negative set works, right? Like again, negative infinity is not really a number, it's just saying anything out that direction is fine, okay? So this is sort of the, let's say, classic way of going about solving a lot of inequalities that end up sort of cleanly broken into two places, where it's like I have some point where to one side of it, everything's an answer, the other side, everything is sort of not an answer, right? Again, sort of most typically we see this in the form of linear equations, right? So like if I look at this thing, all of these are what I would consider linear, meaning they're first degree polynomials on both sides. Now in contrast, I could have something that is say quadratic or some other sort of higher degree polynomial. And this gets a little weird, not, not a lot weird, it doesn't get crazy usually usually, <laughs> um, but it does get a little weird. Nonetheless, I'm gonna start this sort of the same way I did before, which is that I'm gonna move everything to one side. So in this case, I can move the 3x over, right? So I can move the this negative 3x, I can move it over, and I can sort of lift these parentheses and rewrite, right, combining like terms. And that gets me this x squared plus 3x plus two greater than or equal to zero. Now again, uh, I'm sort of thinking about the solution process as if it were an equality. And if this were an equality, not an inequality, then I would try to factor in order to find the zeros, right? So I'm gonna do basically the same thing here. I'm gonna factor this thing. And the good news is I can factor pretty cleanly, right? So this is gonna be x plus one times x plus two, and it's still greater than or equal to zero, right? I didn't multiply by a negative or anything like that. Now, I'm gonna draw in a number line but this isn't for the solution set because it's not really clear what the solution set is here, but rather what I'm gonna do is make a sign graph of that left side, meaning that I can think of this, right? I have the, I have the equation bit over here and I wanna know when is it greater than or equal to zero. But another way of thinking about that is when is it sort of not negative, right? I wanna know where it's positive and where it's zero. And so that lends well to looking at the zeros to make a sign chart. Right? So if you remember, you plug in the zeros or any discontinuities or anything like that. So here my zeros are negative one and negative two. Right? So I put in my negative one, negative two. That breaks it into these three regions, right? To the left of negative one, uh, sorry, to the left of negative two, between negative two and negative one, and to the right of negative one. And then I test some value in there for each of these things. 
And doing that will get me that I have sort of positive on the outside edges and negative in between those two values, okay? So classic sign chart, we have done videos on that before, so you can you know feel free to review that if needed. But again, I still haven't gotten the solution set yet. This just tells me sort of when it's positive, when it's negative. But remember, the whole point here was that I sort of set it up early on so that knowing where it was positive, right, because I've I've gotten it so it's greater than or equal to zero, so knowing where it's positive is the same sort of thing as getting my solution set. So since I want to know, okay, why is it positive? Well, it's positive sort of to the right of negative one and to the left of negative two. That's my solution set. And since it's greater than or equal to zero, I want to include the zeros, negative one and negative two. So I put in my filled in dots and then the arrows going, in this case, out so that I'm getting all of that positive region. And I have arrows at the end because there's no sort of stop point, right? It just goes on forever and ever. Again, the sort of parts here, right? I, I have the sign chart as the sort of part that tells me where it's positive, negative. But this number line bit now is a solution set for that inequality. Now I can convert this into interval notation, but now I have separate intervals, right? Before we had one interval in most cases. Here I have two intervals. I have the interval from negative two to negative infinity and from negative one to positive infinity, which means my sort of final solution set, like all of that together, is just those two things together, right? I want to take the union of these things because I want all of it from both, or really all solution sets, in this case, both solution sets, all of that stuff put together. So I use that, that uh, U looking symbol, meaning union. So my final sort of solution then is negative infinity to negative two with a bracket, because I'm including negative two, union bracket, because I'm including negative one, negative one to positive infinity, close parenthesis, okay? All right, so what do we do? Well, we talked about a sort of typical way of going about, I should say the sort of two most common ways, let's say, of going about solving inequalities. On the one hand, sometimes they're really just sort of straightforward and you can sort of just algebraically go down and solve for x and you get to some point where you end up with like x is greater than four or x is less than negative two or whatever. And that gives you the inequality form of the solution set, but then you can also do you know, the classic number line or interval notation or whatever you want. But there's sort of this other way that inequalities often crop up, which is that a lot of the times you'll end up with something that doesn't have sort of a nice way to solve for x directly. So instead, we end up doing this uh, sort of weird sign chart version of the solution process, right? Where we get zero on one side, everything else on the other, factor that, make a sign chart, and then depending on whether we want it greater than zero or less than zero, we pick the sort of correct parts of the sign chart as our solution set, okay? So that is that.